everything that, uh, that I do is something that I've seen. You see, I, d I don't ever look at myself as being someone who created anything. I, I'm a discoverer, I'm a learner. My name is Troy Jackson. I am an artist and I do uh, sculpture and I'm currently working with clay and steel. I was born and raised right here at Telequal. We lived uh, at a house uh, that my dad had built. My dad was very practical, but he liked to do the work himself so he could save money. I think a lot of that, you know, it fell over on me, the practicality of things. But I had, I had been drawing back uh, as far back as I can remember first grade. I mean, I knew at that time that I was, I was going to be an artist. I focused on that every day, uh, and my dad was supportive. But my mother was the one that, uh, you know, she would push you into doing something. And so I got a little bit of both, but all through high school, I couldn't wait to, to uh, get into college and, you know, start my career. To be honest with you, uh, I, I was never interested in native art until I started my associate's degree at Baycomb. It's really funny because I wasn't very interested in sculpture. Paintings, that was my, that's what I wanted to be, was a painter. I graduated and I finished my bachelor's degree at uh, Northeastern in Fine Arts. And I think that's where I started thinking more of conceptual ideas. The next thing I know, I'm, I'm out of school and I, I need to sell something. So that's when I, I'm sitting around, I take a piece of clay and I make a small Indian or a statue and I set it on a piece of pottery. And lo and behold, things started happening for me. That's how it transferred from painting to pottery and then to sculpture. Right now, at this point, I'm using uh, steel and clay. Uh, I choose the two because they're, they're so opposite to each other. Uh, they actually don't like each other. They're not, they're unforgiving. But I think once I put them together, they contrast with each other and they complement at the same time. There's four aspects to uh, sculpture. There is manipulation, there's addition, subtraction, and molding. And so that's what I, I incorporate every one of those aspects of sculpture into each one of these. What I'm doing is I'm forcing any air out of this clay. And you just want to soften the clay up and get it smooth for the mold. Because what we're going to do is we're going to, uh, again, make a mold, which, uh, which is part of the, it is one aspect of uh, sculpture. Now clay is very time sensitive, so uh, there's different stages, there's different levels. This is what we call greenware. Uh, the clay is in a state of moist, moistness so that we can, we're able to do just about anything we want to do with it. Basically, this is what we're going to get. We'll get the likeness or the, uh, which is a, the opposite of whatever your mold is. In this case, a fish. I like to create my own designs because I think that's what um, that's what my ancestors did. They had some that they all knew what they meant, but for the most part, I think we create our own.
I've always been interested in about uh, in our ancestors uh, beliefs of a of a creator and their uh, their belief in prayer and how they associated that with their culture you know how it developed uh, into today's culture and so this is what this piece is about uh, the text here is uh, Cherokee and it uh, in English in Cherokee it, it is a dadolisti and in English it means the prayer and I think it uh, another thing for that into my culture, uh, I think that prayer is, is very valuable for me. It's, it, it helps to keep me focused, uh, you know, being self-employed, uh, being an artist. Uh, you have to keep focused and, and not let uh, distractions uh, keep you down because, man, you just get distracted all the time. But I use prayer to bring me back to that, that center. One of the, the, the greatest attribute that a man can uh, have is uh, humility. And I, I would like for people to see that in me. And I hope they see that in my, in my artwork. I don't know, I, I just like the, the quietness of them. Sometimes it's just, it's just, you know, it's hard to go back and think that things that I wanted to do just came to came to pass and you know I, I tell everybody you know everybody says well you know how does it feel to be old or, you know you're getting old and I'm like man I love it but I just for some reason being the age that I am now is just just having a great time and I get to look back and see you know what happened through my life and my children's lives and you know get to see who they become and it's it's just a great story.